Okay. Um, <clears throat> regarding a pot that is placed in an oven, if a sheret is in the oven, the pot is tahor. If an earthenware vessel does not, uh, if for an earthenware vessel does not render utensils tame, if there was a pot beverage sufficient to moisten, the beverage becomes tame and transmitted tuma. Thus, this pot says that which made you tame did not make me tame, and yet you have made me tame. Regarding a chicken that's followed a sheriff's, by the way, I liked your picture yesterday with the pot with the chicken. How'd you find that? <laughs> it's mid journey. Um, <laughs> it's AI. Um, all of my, all of the things, the, the thumbnails for the videos, I'm, I'm doing in AI. You know, I, I, this is a second for a second. You, sh you can shut this if you want. Um, I saw a picture of, of starting a chicken that swallowed sheriffs and then fell into the airspace of an oven. The oven is tahor, but if the chicken died, the oven is tummy. If a sheriff was found in an oven, the bread that is in the oven becomes a shami, tuma, and for the oven, if the, if the oven is a starting level of tuma. Regarding a, le a, a leaven, regarding a leaven container that is surrounded by a sealed cover and placed in an oven, if leaven and a sheriff are in it, and the dividing walls between them, the oven is tummy, but the leaven is tahor. And if there is an olive vine piece from the corpse, the oven and everything in the house is tummy, but the leaven is tahor. Uh, if there is an opening of one tepak, everything is tummy. Okay. All right. New Mishnah. Hasheret Shenyamsa Ba'ayan Shaltanur. Okay, so it's called the eye of the oven. And um, the Mishnah is not clear about it, uh, what, what the eye is. And you see in the diagram on the left, um, different opinions of what the eye is. So one is like, so looking at the top, according to Rav and Rush, it's like a little chimney at the top. There's a, there's a, um, is a pipe that that, that uh, allows heat in or heat out. I, I'm not sure. You know, never having used one of these ovens, I'm not sure what the what the design uh, accomplishes. But you see, there's it's like a little pipe that's stuck into the top of the right. oven that that can be opened or closed. And according to Rosh Rambam and Pagon, it's um it's it's that little uh, opening on the base over there. But let's let's work with the um with with the the first one, the that little pipe over there. So now the sheretz is found in the eye. Okay. So now there is that part of the oven does the, the and does it transmit its tumor into the rest of the oven? Okay. So the answer is um or by shall kira, which whether it's a, <coughs> a stove or an oven. Okay, but iron shall kupach or Kupach uh, also it's it's all the same kind of design. Mina safa apnemius velachutz tahor if it's from the uh, the inner edge until until outside the oven that is called tahor because the that little pipe is not part of the main structure of the oven and it's uh, it does not transmit tuma into the oven okay mm -hmm. um, and if it was in the air afilu kazais min hames tahor and uh, if it's outdoors right even if you've got a kazais min hames inside there the whole thing is still tower because it doesn't form a, it doesn't form an ore hell. So there's no difference whether it's a sheritz or 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 something from, from a dead body. It still remains tower. However, if the eye is so big that it's, that you could that, that it's got a height of a tefach, then suddenly that, that tefach now makes it, it makes the, the inside of that of that outer clea into an ore hell and the tumor spreads through uh, through it into the oven. Okay, and then everything is tame. Yeah. Okay. So, so now a dead sheriff is found in the place where the wood is 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 placed. Okay. So now just flip over the page and you can take a look at the uh, diagrams of what what the parts of the stove are. So the different opinions of this again according to Rav and Rash and Rambam, you've got just a perfectly round um a perfectly round oven over there. And the thickness of the wall is the is the place that we're talking about where where uh, where the wood goes in uh, in at the bottom, okay. And the sheretz is found in that area. On according to Rosh, you've got that sort of uh, concentric um, thing where where the base is wider than the top, and right. um, and 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 there he's talking about uh, according to Rosh, we're talking about the the space in that uh, wider flatter piece. Okay, uh -huh. uh, looking inside the Mishnah again. Um, so if if it's in if the sheretz is found in the place of the where the where the fuel is put, Rabbi Yehuda Omer min hasafa hachitzona v'lipnem tamais is very machmir. He says 
anywhere that's inside that from from the outer room and inwards the whole thing is tame it, it's going to spread the tumor to the whole to the whole oven they say from the from the inner edge right so from the inner edge of that wall and going out that's uh, that's called tahor. So the thickness of the wall, according to Chachamim, does not spread tumor to the rest of the oven. Rabbi Yossi Omer Mikneged Shvisa Sakadera Velichnim Tame. So from the place under which the um, uh, uh, the, the, the pot is placed, remember there are these holes that you put the, the the pots on top of in order to cook. That's what lets the heat through. And Rabbi, Hood, Rabbi Yossi is very makil on this. He says that only if the if the sheretz is actually under the space where the pots are cooking. That's where it's tame. But uh, uh, but 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 further out, it's not it's not uh, but further out that that remains tahor. Okay, and the chachamim the halacha is like the chachamim. Nimza makom yeshiva sabalan. Okay, so um, in a different configuration over here. The Balan is the is the bathhouse attendant. Um, he's the and he and he's looking after the the hot water in the in the, in the bathhouse. So uh, um, so you see on page three seventy four, there's a there's that diagram of of you know the fire that's heating up the water that he puts into the into the bath, and right. he's and he's got a little place there where uh, that's cut away for him to sit and and look after the water. Okay. And that on the bottom of the pot on the uh, bottom of the stove. Uh, the oven, rather, the oven, there's like a little design. I don't know if that design is supposed to show us something or. Well, that, that uh, underneath it, that's the fire. Is yours in black and white? Right, but above that, on the oven itself, there's a um, like little, a little design, like a circular design, a half moon. Well, that's, that's, that's like just showing, that's um, it's sort of a dotted line showing that there's a hole under, under underneath there. So, okay. there's, so there's a fire at okay. the bottom. And right. it's and the heat rises up to cook the the water on top of it. On top of that, okay, all right, I got and it. The, and the balan sits next to it. All right, okay. Okay, now if the sheretz was found in the space next to the fire, but under the balan, right? You, it's it's a it's a hollow seat over there. Okay. Okay. Makom yeshiva satzaba or or, um. So we're going to see that this is tahor because it's not it's not in the airspace underneath uh, underneath there. And the same goes for the tzaba, the uh, the dyer, um, the, the dyer has a similar configuration where for for his pot that's making the dyes. Makom yeshiva shall shul kezeisim, or the people who um, who stew the olives. Okay, that's uh, this is called tower. Ein tamei ella min ha'stima velifnim. Okay, there's and it's only it's only tamei if. Uh, um, if the sheretz is found from the place where the um, um, where, where, where the pot covers up the opening and inwards, okay, so that so you can see why that's a follow-on from the previous situation, because that um, that's what Rabbi uh, Rabbi Yossi was saying is is um, is the only place that it's tame. But in this case, everyone agrees with him. Okay, all right. Okay, um, Tess, Bor. Okay, so you got a pit now. Normally. Yeah, you put any anything that's inside that that's that's uh, that's fixed into the ground like that would uh, you can't you can't talk about tumen and tara of, of just stun of bore uh, that's nothing. Chiesh will base shapisa, but it's got a place in it for a pot to be set. Okay, and it's which means basically what's happened is it's got a uh, it's it's got a room that's been baked into it. So it's actually got a um, a clay baked into the into the sides of the of the the bore. Okay, and it's got a so it's got a place set on top of it for a pot to go. That can be tame. If a sheretz falls into it, the whole thing becomes tame. But shall also and but but this is um, for, uh, for 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 glass makers, right? A pit of glass makers. Um, so if it's got uh, if it does have place for uh, for a pot to be set, then it is it is tame. Now hold on a second. There was a. There was a comment that I thought I remembered. Ah, okay, no, no, that's fine. So that's the board. Next is the kivshan, is the the furnace. 
So the furnace of lime manufacturers, um, Rochelle Zagagin, Rochelle Yotrin, Tahoya. So this, so this furnace over here is uh, this is now actually crossed the line from oven to furnace. And a furnace is is not something that you can use for for food because it's not going to come out well. <laughs> so so being that it's not it's not actually made a um, made for for food preparation, um, that means that it's uh, that that means it's it's tower. It's not susceptible to tumor even if they have a place for a pot on top because it's impractical and therefore uncommon to prepare food in them due to the intense heat they generate. So they can't be termed ovens or stoves in the conventional sense. That's what uh, what note says over here. Okay, um, Purana. So a Purana actually is something that's a little uh, more close to the ovens that we're that we're used to, but it's a big. It's it's like it, it's like the other ovens that we've seen up until now, except it's not round. It's uh, it's rectangular and it doesn't have any openings on the top. So that seems to be a lot more like what we're what we're used to nowadays, uh, with a sort of a, a, although it's not eye level, but it's a it's a front loading oven, um, and um, in yet so now the question is, can this become tame? So the typical way of making it was just built straight on the ground, and um, and what the Mishnah tells us is that im yeshla is based maya, only if it's got a a lip. As in the the bottom right picture on page three seventy nine, okay. If it's got a lip over there, then that's uh, then that can become tame because now that's a key. But if not, then not. Um, so the one on the top, the one on the on the top right, top left rather, we can't cannot be made. That, that would be that would be tahor. Um, so since. Okay, since the since the manner in which a purana is used to bake and cook is different from the manner in which standard ovens and stoves are used, it's not included in the category of ovens and stoves that the Torah dec decreed susceptible to tumor, even though they're connected to the ground. Okay, so so basically, the reason that this, so the reasoning being, oh, sorry, let me just take a little bit further up. Look at look at the footnote directly under the first diagram. And mm -hmm. unlike regular ovens, the standard purana is not susceptible to tumor because it's used in conjunction with the ground. That is, in contrast to standard ovens and stoves in which the ground plays no role in the baking and cooking process, pots are placed on top of the stove to cook and dough is attached to the side of the oven to bake. In a purna, dough and pots are placed on the ground itself to be baked or cooked by the fire burning inside the purna. Since the manner in which the purna is used to bake and cook is different from the manner in which standard ovens and stoves are used, it's not included in the category that the that the Torah decreed susceptible. Okay. Right. So that's the that's the Purna Rabbi Yehuda Omer Im Yesh La Istegios. Okay, Istegios. We're gonna have to look up that word. Okay, Istegios. The footnote tells us that's a ventilation hole. Right. That's similar to those that are found in regular ovens. Alternatively, these are domes that are placed on the roof of this type of oven. According to Rabbi Yehuda, a Purna with Istegios is similar enough to standard oven to be included in the category of ovens that the Torah decreed is susceptible to tumor. Okay. Rabban Gamliel Omer im yesh la shifayos. So if it has a thin lip, says Rabban Gamliel. So what's the difference? Yeah, according to Rabban Gamliel, a thin rim has the same effect as a thick rim required by the Tanakama. Um, okay, and the halacha follows the Tanakama that it needs a lip, a thick lip. Any, any rim on any rim would, would make uh, uh, the to tumor. Doesn't it be thick or thin? So, so according to the Tanakam, it has to be a thick lip. And according to Rabban Gamliel, even, even a thin one. Now, what's the difference between them? Um the commentary actually is kind of shorter than this. It just it just says it's a thin lip. That's right. Uh, I, I don't I, I guess because um because the thinness why why would why would the Tanakama make a distinction and say, well, the thin lip is no good because it's uh, it's not really um adding much to the equation over here it's not it's not uh, uh it's too thin to to hold much heat what we're doing over here is the is the the food is still effectively sitting on the ground and therefore it's not and being that it's connected to the ground um it's mostly the the heat that's coming through the ground that's that's uh that's cooking it i'm, I'm just speculating over here it doesn't uh, it doesn't say clearly um what's the difference um 
Let's see if there's anything else here. Okay. All right, we're going to leave it at that. Okay. Okay, let's go to Hey Dalit. Hey Dalit. A novin that was seated from the outsider that was seated without its intent, or that was seated in the artesian workshop at Tzameh. It once happened that a fire broke out among the oven of Kefar Sigar, and the case came to Yavavna and Rabbi Gil moved the oven's tummy. The, su okay. the, su the, the supplement of the oven of household is his tahor, and that of bakers is tummy because he supports on the he, su he supports the pits the pit on it. Rabbi Yochanan Hanan Sanla says because he bakes with it, and when it is hard pressed. Similarly, the supplement of the cauldron of the olive boilers is tummy, but that of the dyers is tahor. An oven that was filled with earth up to its midpoint, the area from the earth and downward contracts tuma via contact. The area from the earth and upward contracts tuma via airspace. If one places an oven over the mouth of a pit or over the mouth of a cistern and place a stone there, Rabbi Yehuda said that his lights are fire below and the oven is heated above, it is tummy. But if the common say, since in any event the oven was heated, it is tummy. Okay. Okay. On to tummy. Okay, Tess Hay. Whoever won the privilege of the shovel service took the silver bowl and ascended to the top of the outer altar, and he cleared away the tolls to this side and to that side and scooped out from the inner coals. He descended and poured these coals into the shovel of gold. About a cup of coals would become scattered from it, and he would sweep them into the stream. And on the Sabbath, he would invert the copper pot over them. The copper pot was a large vessel which holds a less. Uh, and two chains were connected to the copper pot. One chain that a Kohen would pull up and the, uh, and the pot would descend, and one chain the Kohen would hold on to from above so that the pot would not roll. It served three purposes. They inverted it over the coals and over their chariots on the Sabbath, and they lowered the ash for the top of the altar in it. They reached the area where the, between the antechamber and the altar, and one Kohen took the shovel and threw it between the antechamber and the altar. A person could not hear the voice of his fellow in Yushalayim due to the sound of the shovel, and the sound served three purposes. A Kohen who heard the sound would know that his brethren, the Kohanim, would be entering the Hekel to prostrate themselves and would run and come. And a Levi who heard his sound would know that his brethren, the Levian, would be entering the courtyard to chant the song and he would run and come. And the head of the Mamad would post the Tommy Kohen at the eastern gate uh, to the Temple Mount. They began ascending the steps of the empty chamber. The two Kohanim were in the privilege of clearing the ash from the inner altar and from the menorah would go ahead of them. The Kohen, the Kohen who won the privilege of clearing the ash from the uh, inner altar entered the Hekel and took the basket and prostrated himself and exited. The Kohen who won the privilege of clearing the ash from the menorah entered the Hekel and if he found the two easternmost ants burning, he would clear the ash of the, in, in, um, I'm sorry, of the um, eastern lamp and would leave the western lamp burning because from it the Kohen would kindle the other lamps of the menorah in the evening. If he found that the western lamp went out, he would clear its ash and light it from the fire of the Oha or the altar. He took the jug from the second stop and prostrated himself and exit. Okay. Going, that's it. Yeah. All right, Khulin, you'd out of base. Um, how many are considered many? Meshama says two sheep, as it is stated, a man will sustain a calf and two sheep. Five, as it is stated, five prepared sheep. Reb Dosa ben Harkinus says five sheep, um, each of which is shown by a mana and a half. Are subject to the law of the first of the fleece. For the sages are say five sheep that are shown by any amount. How much will we give him? The weight of five selim in Judea, which are equal to the same selim in Galil. Bleach but not dirty, enough to make a small garment out of it. As it is stated, you shall give to him, and that there should be enough for the gift. So he did not manage to give it to him until he died, he is exempt. If he bleached it but did not die it, he is obligated. If one buys the fleece of a gentile, uh, gentle, Gentile sheep, he is exempt from the first of the fleece. If one buys a fleece of another sheep, he is, the seller left some over. The seller is obligated. If he did not leave anything over, the buyer is obligated. If he had two kinds, dark one and white ones, and he I sold him the dark ones, but not the white ones, and males, but not the females, this one must give for himself, and that one must give for himself. The mitzvah of sending away from the nest applies both in the land and outside the land, when the temple exists and when the temple does not exist. The unconsecrated birds, but not the consecrated ones. The stringency of the mitzvah of covering the blood over the mitzvah of sending away from the nest is that the mitzvah of covering the blood applies to both beasts and fowl, whether at one's disposal or not at one's disposal, 
whereas the mitzvah of sending away from the nest applies only to fowl, and it applies only to those not at one's disposal. Which are those that are at one's, not at one's disposal? Examples are geese and chickens that nested in the orchard. But if they nested in the house, and similarly, Haredian doves, he is exempt from sending them away. Okay. One more. He is exempt from sending away a non-kosher bird. If a non-kosher bird sits on the eggs of a kosher bird, or if a kosher bird sits on the eggs of a non-kosher bird, one is exempt from sending it away. A male partridge, the other evidence rules that one is obligated to send it away, but the stage is exempt. Yeah. We're going to do something new to we'll start something new to oh, well, no, we'll finish tomorrow on this. Uh, we'll finish we'll, we'll finish uh, tomorrow. Uh, after Chulin is Bechoros. Bechoros, okay. Um, Zion Aleph of Abbasia. If one said to another, I'm selling you a base core of earth and it contained uh, uh, services, services, 10 hand breadth deep or rocks 10 hand breadth high, they are not measured with it. If they were less than this, they are measured with it. If they said to him, I'm selling you like a base core, like a base core of earth, even if it contained crevices deeper than 10 to Fakum or rocks higher than 10 to Fakum, they are measured with it. If one said to another, I'm selling you a base core of, as measured, of earth as measured by a rope, if he gave even the slightest amount less, he must deduct. If he gave even the slightest amount more, he must give back. If he said whether less or more, even if he gave a quarter uh, cob less per saw or a quarter cob more per saw, it becomes his. And if it was more than this, he should make a reckoning. What does he give back? Money. But if the seller prefers, he gives him back the land. Why did they say he gives back money? To improve the position of the seller, so that if they remained an area of nine cobs in the field, or ten cobs in the garden, or a quarter cob according to it, the Rekiva, or to according to Rabbi Kiva, he may give back the land. Moreover, he has not only the quarter cob, but he gives back, but also all the excess. If he said, I am selling you as measured by a rope, it'd be at less or more. The condition, it'd be at less or more, negates the condition of measured by a rope. If he said, be it less or more by measured by a rope, the condition is measured by a rope, and the gates, the condition, be it less or more. And these are the words of Ben Nantananas. If he described it by a mark and boundaries that the difference is less than a sixth, he must accept it. And anything down to a sixth, he deducts. Okay. He once says, that was it. Okay. Okay. Gimel. Gimel Yud. Yeah. Ben Cotton made 12 spouts of the labor, for it formerly had only two. He also made a machine for the labor so that its water should not become unfit by remaining overnight. But, um, King Mombaz made all the handles of the utensils used for Yom Kippur of gold. Helene? Uh, Helene? No. That's right. Right. Uh, Helena. That's right. Helena, his mother, placed a golden candelabra over the edges of the holy. He also made a golden tablet upon which a section of the Torah of the suspected adulteress was written. Minakor, miracles happened to his doors, and they used to lord him. As for these, and these for censure, those of the Gamar family did not want to teach outsiders about making the pound of bread. Those of the Avitas family did not want to teach about making the incense. And who grows a levy who knew a special musical method but did not want to teach it? And Kazmi, Kaz, Kazzar, did not want to teach the method of writing. And about the first one, it is said, the mention of righteous writers out of nothing. And about the others, it is said, and the name of the wicked will rot. He, he snatched from the lottery box and picked up two lots. One said for Hashem, and the other said for Azil, scribe line. The deputy calling God was stood on his right, and the head of the family on duty on his left. And the lot of Hashem came up on his right hand. The deputy said to him, My Lord, calling God, raise your right hand. And if that of Hashem came up on his left hand, the head of the family said to him, My Lord, go and raise up your left hand. He puts it upon the two um, he goes and says to Hashem, a sin offering. And Yishmael says, He did not have to say a sin offering merely for Hashem. And the answer after him, Blessed is the king, the glory of the kingship forever and ever. Tied a strip of red bull to the head of the he goat, which was sent off. That's it. That's it. We're, we're done. Yeah, it's a fast. Yeah, we're done so fast. Okay, you're dying. And we have Gimel Bites. Anything that qualifies Truma renders hands tummy, causing them to become tummy to the degree of shame. One hand can render a pair of tummy, but these are the words of Rev. Shua, but the sages say a shame does not create another shame. He said to them, but they are not Kisleh Kadosh, Tommy to the degree of Shani, and yet they read the hands Tommy. He said to them, we cannot deduce words from the Torah from words of the scribe. No words of the scribes from the words of the Torah, no words of the scribes from words of the scribes. Straps of the filling that are together with the filling remember the Tommy hands that touch them. Rabbi Shimon says, straps of the filling that do not remember the Tommy hands that touch them. 
margins of a whole leaf scroll, whether those in the top of the scroll or those in the bottom or the beginning or the end, where the tummy hands that touch them. The Yehuda says the margin at the end of the scroll does not render the hands tummy unless one made a roll of four. Okay. And that's it. Okay, great. Okay. And don't believe anything you see or read or anything like that. It doesn't. Absolutely. <laughs> that's the point. Okay. Anyway, have a great day.